Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call of Raju Engineers Limited hosted by Ad Factors PR. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And now hand the conference over to Ms. Kushbu Chandrakan Doshi, Managing Director from Raju Engineers Limited. Thank you. And over to you, Ms. Doshi. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Welcome to the conference call for Raju Engineers Limited for the fourth quarter and full year concluded on 31st March 24. It's a pleasure to have you all here. We appreciate your presence here today. Joining us on this call with me, Mr. Sunil Jain, our Executive Director, Mr. Prakash Daga, Chief Financial Officer, and our Investor Relations Team, Ed, Ed Factors PR. Let me start with the market scenario and some recent developments for us. India has the potential to emerge as a global plastic producer, plastic products producer. Full extrusion machinery market size was estimated at USD 8.33 billion in 22 and is expected to reach 11.6 billion USD by 2030. The demand for plastic extrusion machines is showing as there is a growing need for extruded plastic products from several end-use segments such as packaging, consumer goods, construction, and automotive. This preliminary is the growth of the global plastic extrusion machine market. The domestic plastic product market is expected to grow threefold to reach 10 lakhs crore rupees by 2728. The export of plastic products are expected to grow by grow from 40,000 crore to 1 lakh crore rupees, reflecting the global acceptance of Indian products. This is an excellent opportunity for the Indian industry, and we must make the most of it as more plastic products imply more plastic processing. machineries speaking of our company's performance i am delighted to present exceptional financial achievements of raju engineers for the fourth quarter and year ended 2024 throughout this period the company has showcased remarkable growth and commitment characterized by notable milestones such as elevated production levels augmented machinery dispatches and robust order book i am very happy to share that our revenue for the year crossed rupees 197 crore which is a testament to the hard work and dedication of our team and focus efforts on the strategic chart strategies charted out in FY23 this is just a one step the overall growth strategy this positive momentum underscore the effectiveness of the company's strategic initiatives and highlights its ability to capitalize on the emerging opportunities in the market Our order book has reached new heights, reflecting the trust and confidence of our customer in our solutions. We are committed to ensure that these orders are fulfilled promptly and with the highest standard of quality, further solidifying our reputation in the world market. During the year, we backed a high value order from one of the leading manufacturer of farm machinery and equipment based out of Europe. This prestigious order is for our cutting edge blown frame line chip. This machine is used to manufacture silo bags as per the needs and requirements of customer. This is innovative solution represents our ongoing commitment to provide the solution in agriculture industry with the state of the art equipment that enhance efficiency and product quality. I am pleased to announce the successful delivery of two prestigious projects in the category of sheet extrusion system. each boasting an impressive output around 800 kg per hour this project represents significant milestone for our company and underscore our commitment to delivering excellence in the field of manufacturing our supplies to cosmo films and berry global two of the india industry giants 
speaks volume about our reputation for reliability and innovation. This partnership not only demonstrates our capability to meet the demanding requirements of leading players in the market, but also signifies the trust they have placed in our expertise and technology. I am thrilled to share our latest milestone in innovation and technology, the enhancement in technology for our existing five-layer Bronson line range. This initiative represents a significant leap forward as we prepare to launch India's first ever high output five layer ground cell line. With an impressive output of 800 kilograms per hour and a line speed exceeding 150 meters per minute, this cutting edge technology sets a new standard in the industry, competing with global leaders offering value for money for our customers. Moreover, on April 16, 2024, we celebrated the integration of our new facility, marking a significant expansion in our operational capacity. With an additional 21,000 square feet dedicated to assembly, we are poised to streamline production processes and meet growing demand with efficiency and reduced lead times. Notably, our commitment to excellence extends to the establishment of a dedicated 7,000 square feet space for quality control underscoring our unwavering focus on elevating quality standards across all facets of our operations. This investment underscores our dedication in delivering superior products and services, positioning us for the sustained growth and customer satisfaction in the ever-evolving market landscape. I am pleased to inform you that in line with our commitment to enhancing the shareholder value, the company bought back 26,176 equity shares at a price of 210 rupees, each in pursuance of shareholders' special resolution dated 17 January 2024. The decision to conduct a share buyback can stem from a variety of strategic considerations, such as efficient utilization of capital, giving value to early shareholders wanting to exit and driven by a positive future outlook. By repurchasing share, a company aims to enhance value for shareholders by potential increasing earnings per share and boosting returns. Additionally, such action signals confidence in the company's financial strength and future prospects, serving as a tangible expression of the management's belief in the company's ability to generate sustainable growth and shareholders' value. Our strategic vision is extensive and comprehensive. We are broadening our international presence, entering into the new markets, investing significantly in research and development to create a more energy-efficient product and adopting a digital solution to provide better customer experience. The core of our approach remains our customer, and our goal is to continuously exceed their expectations. We have a robust plan to stay ahead of the competition by developing or acquiring technology which is adjacent to our existing portfolio to offer complete solutions in the sector, continuously optimizing manufacturing cost and standardization of the existing products that can give us an edge over the competitors, not only from India but globally as well. Looking forward, our focus is on securing a significant portion of the market in infrastructure agriculture, electronics, and renewable energy sectors. However, our vision extends beyond mere market dominance. We are dedicated to fostering inclusion and diversity within our workforce, with commitment to allocate 8 to 10 percent of total employment opportunities for women and 2 percent for a differently able human beings. Furthermore, under our sustainability program, we are determined to make significant strides towards reducing our carbon footprint. We aim to satisfy 65% of our total electricity needs through renewable energy sources, preliminary through the expansion of our existing solar park. This reflects our unwavering commitment to environment, uh, environmentally responsible practices and emphasize our commitment to driving positive change both within our industry and beyond. We are enthusiastic about the journey that lies ahead. Our objective is clear. We aim to create a long-term value for our old stakeholders. So with this brief note, I would like to hand over to Mr. Prakash Daga, our Chief Financial Officer, to take us through the financial performance of the company. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Doji. Uh, let me brief the quarterly financial performance. 
Revenue from operations for the quarter was rupees 56.52.68 crores in quarter four FY24, as against rupees 71.43 crores in quarter four FY23. A year-on-year -year decrease of 26.26 percent. .26%. This was mainly due to delay in the balance of payment and lifting of machines by the customers, since lead time of the order execution ranges from four to nine months and it can exceed even nine months in some orders. EBITDA, excluding other income, was at rupees 8.96 crores in quarter four FY24, as against rupees 6.47 crores in quarter four FY23, increase of 38.45 percent on year-on-year -year basis due to higher capacity utilization and improvement in operational efficiencies during the current quarter. EBITDA margin was at rupees, uh, was at 17.02 percent, as against 9.06 percent, a YOI increase of 7.96 basis points. Profit after tax stood at rupees 7.08 crores in quarter 4 FY24, compared to rupees 5.39 crores in quarter 4 FY23, YOI increase of 31.35 percent. Fat margin was at 13.45 percent, as against 7.55 percent, YOI increase of 590 basis points. Earnings per share stood at rupees 1.15 in quarter 4 FY24, compared to rupees 0.88 in quarter 4 FY23, YOI increase of 30.68 percent. Now coming to our full year financial performance, revenue from operations for the year ended was rupees 197.35 crores in FY24, as against rupees 159.79 crores in FY23, a YOI increase of 23.51 percent on account of intensive efforts by a larger sales team, a sales team and entry into new territories, coupled with revived demand for uh, for sheet exclusion lines and thermo performance. EBITDA, excluding other income, was at rupees 26.68 crores in FY24, as against rupees 14.02 crores in FY23, increase of 90.35 percent YOI on account of increase in sales, higher capacity utilization, and improved operational efficiencies. EBITDA margin was at 13.52 percent as against 8.77 percent, YOI increase of 475 basis points. A conscious standardization of products helped to optimize raw material and other operating costs during the year. Profit after tax was rupees 21.01 crores in FY24, compared to rupees 11.49 crores in FY23, YOI increase of 82.86 percent. Pat margin was rupees uh, was 10.65 percent as against 7.19 percent, YOI increase of 346 basis points. Earnings per share stood at rupees 3.41 per share in FI24, compared to rupees 1.87 in FI23, YOI increase of 82.35 percent. With this, now I am happy to open the floor for any questions you may have. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Manoj from Rajani Enterprises. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi, am I audible? Yes, you are. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. So uh, congratulations of on uh, you know, good numbers. So first question was a bookkeeping question. So has there been an acqu acquisition of assets during the period as I can see, uh, like, you know, the increase in the plant equipment, uh, so just basically that uh, you know, in FY24? Yes. There was a capex of 9.33 crores during the FY24. And it was mainly into land. Uh, we had uh, purchased adjacent land uh, for the uh, expansion and uh, consider building uh, as well as that. 
okay so and uh, like secondly wanted to know uh, like you know basic uh, trends that are have uh, that that you have noticed in the plastic extrusion machinery and uh, for for the next year as well uh, like you know FY25 and FY26 if you could just guide something on that is doshi would you like this suggestion yeah sure so yeah, as i mentioned uh, uh, the kind of growth we are witnessing in the in the sectors like packaging consumer goods construction and automotive that is uh, very encouraging and uh, that is leading the growth in the plastic extrusion machinery worldwide even the recent development uh, in the electronic vehicle is also opening up a revenue uh, revenue stream uh, which may contribute in the future for the extrusion machinery Okay, ma'am. So it it will be for the X F Y twenty six as well. Yes. Okay, and ma'am, any any kind of uh, numerical uh, guidance if you could uh, that you know just uh, an approximate. Yeah, so if you talk about the global market, the current market size is uh, uh, USD eight point three three billion, mm -hmm. uh, which was reported in twenty two, and uh, they expected to grow uh, and reach at USD eleven point six billion by twenty thirty. and uh, if we talk about the domestic market uh, the domestic market product ma is expected to grow threefold to reach uh, to the peak 10 lakhs crore by 2728 so uh, as far as domestic and global market are concerned both the market is growing and uh, we feel that there is a huge opportunity for the products which we manufacture Okay, and sorry, ma'am. Actually, if this, this this might be a repeat question from last phone call. So, what is the market size that we can address? If that could that would really help. Yeah, this is the best part of the entire thing. The market space is huge, and we we are doing only a 200 CR. So there is a great opportunity, and uh, we plan to expand our footprint in the uh, various geographic uh, location uh, outside India. So. If we talk about the domestic market, our market size is nearly uh, for the horizontal uh, sheet extrusion and thermoforming machine. We hold the eighty percent of market share, and in the global market, those market shares are peanuts, and there is a huge opportunity to reach out to all of them. If we talk about the vertical uh, extrusion systems, which is blown film line and other products, uh, we hold in the domestic market nearly. Uh, 60% of the market share which also again giving us an opportunity to uh, grow and in a domestic market uh, in in the export market again it's a it's a peanuts which is uh, again giving us an opportunity there so i understood ma'am thank you so much and just one last question on mainly on the working capital cycle uh, so i can just notice an extension of the inventory days Uh, like you know, from I guess 130 to 190 days or something like that, if I'm not wrong. And also, there has been an increase in the payable days, uh, like kind of just I guess about 10 to 15 days. Uh, so, has, has there been an uh, like you know difficulty from the like in on the you know just the creditor side for us? And also, like what factors are I mean you know continue contributing to this change? Like, I mean this is an industry-wide phenomenon, or just uh, like you know one-off for our company? and yeah that, that that's uh, my question yeah. okay sir yeah let me explain it uh, like uh, see the inventory days have increased due to higher inventory level at the year end on account of time gap between the production and lifting of machine back to back procurement of uh, high need time of components uh, against high volume orders however there is a temp it's a temporary increase in the inventory and we hope it will be back to normal in the next two quarters Second reason is the payable. Uh, second question was about payable days, which has increased. Yes. It is due to back-to-back -back procurement of high lead time uh, components against high volume orders. Now, see, uh, due to this rate hike crisis, uh, the imported component what we are uh, importing from Europe and other countries, the lead time has increased. To secure okay. that, uh, to uh, to overcome that lead time, the, uh, we have uh, to uh, increase the inventory. Uh, But the company has ensured that the longer holding time of the inventory is accommodated with uh, longer payment obligations is the uh, important assignments uh, with higher reason in NC. So uh, overall, the net working capital cycle has temporarily increased uh, to 165 days. Yes, sir. Uh, however, however, the entire inventory in our case, the entire we are following uh, order based production. So the entire okay. inventory, what we are holding, we can say it is uh, sold inventory. 
All right. So, so like you said, in the next couple of quarters, so first half we can see some normalization in the working capital cycle, correct? Yeah, we hope it can norm. It will be normalized because uh, we uh, if uh, let us see and now how this uh, rate fix crisis and all takes place. And uh, secondly, the dependency on the uh, customers uh, about with lifting of the order. So these are the two factors. We uh, hope it will normalize the next two next two quarters, and we can be back to normal levels. All right, sir. Yeah, that's it from my side, sir. Yeah, I will get back in the queue for the if I have any other further questions. Sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of R K Ladda from Yash Investments. Please go ahead. Congratulations for the good uh, set of numbers and thank you for giving me the opportunity. <clears throat> I just want to get some clarity on the uh, on the is there any replacement uh, demand for our product? Hello. Hello. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. You're audible. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, is there any replacement demand for our machinery? As I have read in your presentation, that there now uh, at present more than two lakh core machines are presently in operation. Then what is the average age for our machine? So generally, the average age used to be a twenty years, reduced yeah, to a ten years. Not. Uh, uh, because the technology upgradation nowadays is so okay. fast okay. that uh, you know it rates to ten years, and after processors may feel like upgrading the technology or enhancing it. Okay. Then is there a good replacement demand also? Yes, yes. There is a good replacement demand as well, and there is good uh, demand for the refurbishment as well, which is again a different uh, revenue stream opening up for us. Okay. 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 Thank you. This is from my side. Okay, and all the best for future working of your company. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Rahul Khanna from ABS Global Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, ma'am. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. I just, you know, I just had a question that. Looking at the growth, what kind of revenue and margins are we expecting for the coming fiscal year? And also, if you can guide for the next two years. Yeah, considering the this this year uh, and the kind of order booking we have, we we are uh, targeting to grow by another 17 to 20 percent in terms of revenue by next year uh, with improved EBITDA uh, margin. Uh, at around uh, 13 to 15 percent. Okay, okay, right. And ma'am, um, these margins uh, are are we looking these as the sustainable margins? Yes, yes. Right, right. Thank you, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Raj from Raj of Partners. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir, you are. Yeah. How much is the order book currently? <clears throat> Mr. Jain, would you like to take this? Currently, the order book is about uh, 140 crores, and uh, we expect in the next uh, six to nine months uh, these orders will be executed. Okay. And how much is the current pi pi pipeline are we seeing? Pipeline is, uh, uh, to put a figure to it, is very difficult because we are looking at a global level. But uh, I would say we are very bullish uh, because the market and the demand are increasing. As uh, was mentioned earlier, we are getting into new uh, geographies. So we have a good pipeline, I would say, of at least about uh, 800, 900 crores. But it all depends upon the conversion rate from pipeline to order booking. Yeah. So how much is the average conversion rate, pipeline to order booking? Just in rough figure. Uh, roughly, if we are looking at uh, a current pipeline of 1,000 crores, we are looking at uh, that getting converted. At least uh, one is to five. 
would be the conversion depending on from territory to territory uh-huh. understood all right also how much is the capex are we planning to incur for fy25 and fy26 i think kushpu can take that question ma'am may i request to unmute your line please kushpu ma'am can you hear us hello hello yes ma'am now you're all uh, yeah. yeah for the next year we are looking at around 15 cr of capex in the tools uh, mainly on the uh, Uh, cnc machines uh, imported one so that would be there and uh, for next to next year uh, more capex would be on the again the space creation on the right and who are our main peers in our segment sorry i must be uh, who are our main peers in our segment uh yeah there are two uh, if we talk about the european competitors uh, there are three major players uh, uh, from what well, two from germany and one from uh, italy uh, and if we talk about the domestic market there are also two big player in the domestic market uh, winter machines and carbax solution and we compete with them on the basis of price in terms of poor quality, quality. no we compete with them on the basis of technology all right okay purely based on the technology because these two competitors are double in the age of uh, raju engineers so we compete in terms of technology acha so our products are competitive com- comparatively higher price to an extent ah uh, i would say the higher technology that leads all to right. a little price increase all right all right and if i if i may add to that uh, when we talk about high technology uh, in terms of energy efficiency uh, we uh, really give a value for money and that can just and that very well justifies being the revenue expenditure it very well justifies uh, the premium which they would be giving to us understood all right okay thank you bye thank you participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of supan parik individual investor please go ahead mm-hmm. uh, hi good afternoon sir i am audible hello yes you are yeah uh, congratulations on good set of numbers so i have just couple of questions so like uh, my first question would be are we facing any challenges uh like in case of manpower or logistic over the period of time <laughs> yeah which business doesn't face this <laughs> of course <we> are, <laughs> right we are facing and uh, of course rajkot uh, you know rajkot where we are based is also coming up with that a great engineering hub that also creates a security of uh, manpower and uh, but yeah we could, we are able to i mean if we talk about the current uh, manpower situation at raju engineers uh, more than 60% are the employees uh, with us since last uh, more than 10 20 25 years so we are always blessed with the people around and uh, we are not really struggling with the manpower but of course it's a normal r- routine business challenges which we face when we are uh mm-hmm. quite well able to handle that the same and as far as the supply chain is concerned mr daga talked about the red sea crisis and all so those are the things uh, which is causing an uh, an hurdle in the export market for us uh for the domestic market uh, more or less things are pretty much under control okay so i just wanted to ask about the red sea plus which are the major countries like we export to uh yeah we expo uh, mr jain would you like to take this please sure uh we are we go as far as uh, in, in colombia in peru and then coming back uh, uh in this part of the world and there is africa with nigeria kenya south africa then getting into uh, we already have a strong presence in uh, vietnam malaysia thailand 
See, when we talk about the Red Sea crisis, it is not only exports. It is also uh, availability of vessels and the logistics issue because we do use uh, some equipment which is imported. So that affects the lead times. So when we are talking about these uh, uh, geopolitical crises, it, is, it does affect from an whole, uh, all the operations and uh, we are able to manage it by proper planning. Okay, okay sir. Uh, so I also wanted to ask, uh, what are the major industries like in India, in Indian regions you serve the most? Sorry, major what? Sorry? Uh, major industries in India, like in which you serve domestically. Uh, uh, so if I may say, the major industries we cater to currently is a flexible packaging. Uh, and the semi-rigid packaging sector. Okay, okay. Uh, I this is just uh, your a new target. I'm just asking. So, are there any targets in your mind for the revenues and margin for the next two three years? Yeah, I, I think I already talked about it. We are targeting uh, uh, the 20% growth by next year, and uh, the in, uh, EBITDA would be in a range of 13 to 15 percent. Okay. Uh, and uh, what are, what is the current trend in plastic exclusion market? If you may say uh, a bit. Mr. Jain, would you like to take this? So are we talking about domestic or uh, global? Uh, both. Both. Both, okay. If we talk about uh, global in the sector which we are operating, uh, it should be in the region of about 40,000 or 50,000 crores. And uh, as Koitu rightly mentioned, uh, the overall plastic processing machinery, uh, we are negligible. Our presence is negligible as a country. So uh, that is uh, surely going up now. People have started looking at India. If you look at the uh, domestic uh, situation, uh, the industries which we cater to, because there is another industry, the Rafi industry, which is uh, which should be about 2,000 crores, but we are not in that industry. But otherwise, the industry would be in the region of uh, 1,500 crores, um, putting all the exclusion and homoforming uh, products together. Okay. So are we taking any steps as per the industry trend? See, industry trend is, uh, uh, our, our strategy is that since we are in extrusion, extrusion itself caters to a lot of other industries. So if we talk about the industry trend, when we talk about flexible packaging, uh, we already mentioned about uh, new technologies which we have come up with. But extrusion itself also caters to sheet extrusion. And uh, there is a growing trend in the renewable energy segment, more specifically in the solar energy segment. And that's an area which we are looking at. So plastics is plastics. It can be used in packaging. It can be used in infrastructure. It's used in agriculture. And all these are growing markets. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. So uh, as you mentioned about solar, I have one question over there. Is like, what is the market share of solar? And how, like, how much opportunity we have in that solar space going forward? Oh, the opportunity... Uh, so much of government support, and recently you may be aware, uh, yeah. Prime Minister Surya Ghar Mukti Yojana. Right, right, yeah. Which would mean solar panels being installed on households. And then there is a okay. PI scheme for solar modules and even wafers. So uh, the industry is going to definitely grow. And uh, we cater to one of the uh, components which goes into manufacturing of solar modules. Okay. So that's the industry okay. which uh, uh, will, uh, it's an additional sector which we are adding to our portfolio using mm -hmm. the same, our forte being extrusion. Okay. So we'll be, so we will be doing any KPEG for this particular uh, thing like for solar in future? Yes, we already supplied a machine and uh, we have good uh, pipeline of inquiries now because, uh, you know, the government came up with anti-dumping duty 
uh, on both the uh, solar modules and solar cells, which is encouraging a lot of domestic production. Otherwise, people would have just imported stuff from China. So with local manufacturing coming up, uh, we are confident that uh, the requirement for machines will go up. And we are ready with the solutions, uh, already tried and tested. So uh, all get up. Okay. Uh, also, uh, just add a question. Uh, can you throw some light on the machinery which we manufacture for solar space? Sure. Uh, uh, can I request Kushpu to take that? Yeah, yeah. So, um, when you have a solar panel, uh, there is a solar cells inside. And those cells yeah. have to be encapsulated by the uh, sheet, which is uh, EVA, ethyl vinyl acetate. And this EVA sheet getting extruded from the machines which we manufacture. So this is the product which we offer to the solar sector. Okay. So are we like uh, giving out this uh, sheets to any you know sort of clients who may we send this machines? Yeah, we have supplied the machine in domestic market. Uh, okay. The existing player called Nevita Alpha. Uh, they are into manufacturing of uh, sheets and also solar panels. Okay, okay. And my last question which I would like to ask is about a POE sheet like which we manufacture. What is the status on that? Sorry? POE sheet. Uh, yeah, POE. POE sheet is the next version after of technology after EVA sheet, and uh, mm -hmm. our machines are quite capable to process that material because basically the machines remain same and the material which you process the polymers that gets changed. So our machines are uh, capable of processing the POE as well. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. And sir, uh, I'll join the queue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Sri Ram R, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. I have two questions. Uh, how much was your audio is not clear. Can you please speak through the handset? Yeah. Is it audible now? Yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, I have two questions. So one is, you know, how much was your exports for Q4 and also for the full year FY24? Second question is, uh, you know, what is broadly the application split? Like uh, earlier, you have given this figure: flexible packaging, semi-rigid, uh, green solar, etc. Yes, yeah, sure. So, that's why would you take? Yeah. Let me take this question. See, export for this year, FY24 was 45% uh, of total revenue, and territory-wise, uh, uh, sorry, uh, industry-wise, if you uh, Talk about. Then we have we are supplying in uh, different segments, which I will just click. Yeah, flexible packaging uh, supply to flexible flexible packaging industry during the FR24 was around 63 percent of total sales. Then uh, there was agricultural sector and uh, semi-rigid packaging as well. Semi-rigid was 35 percent, and others in uh, agriculture and infrastructure segment. Okay, thank you so much. All the best. Thank you. Next question is from line of Diana Rora from JD Financials. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Am I audible? Hello? Yes, you're audible. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations on good set of numbers. Uh, sir, my first question would be, in our export market, right, uh, which regions account for most orders? Mr. Jain, would you like to take this, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, if Latin America would be would, uh, about 10%. Uh, Vietnam would be about 30%. Uh, uh, um, Africa and South Africa would be the rest. Okay, okay. And sir, uh, which regions or countries, you know, have shown significant growth potential for the company's product? 
Latin America is offering a very... See, uh, uh, let me uh, reiterate what I said earlier. If you look at the global market, presence of Indian companies is hardly there. So wherever you touch, there is growth. But if we talk about specific markets uh, uh, in our industry, specifically talking about flexible packaging, there's a huge uh, growth in the Latin American market with the uh, consumer uh, segment uh, demanding more and more packed foods. Uh, Africa, as usual, because they have specific products which uh, definitely need flexible packaging. So both these markets are uh, giving us good traction. And uh, Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand, again, good growth and flexible packaging. Okay. Uh, and sir, as you said that uh, the presence of Indian companies is low in this area. So are there any, you know, further geographic expansion that we are targeting? We are uh, looking at uh, the CIS countries uh, right now, and uh, that's a good uh, growth opportunity for us. Uh, so, and, you know, we have seen that the demand in the packaging industry has increased over a period of time. So, how do we anticipate this uh, demand to be in the near future? I don't think people have a choice but to buy packed foods. So, uh, we, we do see that flexible packaging or packaging as such growing by at least 6-7% uh, total packaging. And out of that, plastic packaging would uh, uh, definitely be growing at 12-15%. to 15%. Okay, sir. And sir, uh, you know, uh, what is what will be the domestic and global share in uh, terms of Q4 and FY24? Prakash, can you take that? Yeah, yeah. Let me take this question. So the, uh, for F, uh, quarter four FY24, the domestic share was uh, around 70 percent and 30 percent for the exports. Uh, uh, Again, this uh, for the on annualized basis for the full year, uh, the domestic was 55 percent. And uh, exports was 45%. Okay, uh, thank you. And uh, sir, have there any have there been any strategic partnerships or collaborations established in uh, this financial year to drive the growth? Well, there is many in the pipeline. We have not concluded so far, but yeah, we are uh, aggressively working on this initiative. Probably, we may have some good news at the end of the year. Uh, and, ma'am, and, and as you know, industry is rapidly growing. So, are there any challenges that uh, we have been facing, especially in terms of manpower, government policies, shipping lines, logistics, and such? And such thing? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the manpower uh, and uh, supply chain issues, as every business faces, that those are the normal routine challenges which we are facing at this point of time. Uh, we do not fall under any kind of a PLI scheme or any other schemes from the government side as of now. But uh, probably after the election, there, there could be some good news uh, as far as PM is announcing to have the 10 kg of Atabek for each and every person of uh, India. So all those kind of activities may boost up the are uh, revenue streams. Okay. Uh, and uh, what would be your current capacity utilization? We are currently utilizing uh, 80%, which is, uh, I would say, that's full now. And that's why we have uh, invested in the new land and building, which is adjacent to our existing premises. So with that uh, new thing, uh, we would be able to uh, add another 25 to 30 percent of our capacity. Okay. And uh, uh, can you throw some light on any new product segment that we are trying to uh, move into beyond plastic packaging? Uh, beyond packaging, we are targeting uh, agriculture, renewable, and electronics. So these are the segments which we are targeting and uh, we are moving slowly in that segment with our solutions. Okay, and uh, uh, have there been any new notable changes in customer demand patterns in regional or regional market dynamics? Uh, Mr. Jain, would you take this, please? Sure. Uh, again, going back to what I said earlier, uh, people are 
preferring more and more uh, packed foods when uh, e-commerce is a big uh, growth driver because that demands uh, flexible packaging. And uh, that kind of attraction one sees both uh, within the country and uh, overseas. So consumer trend is definitely going in for more uh, packaged foods, which necessitates uh, flexible packaging. And uh, as we were talking about earlier, renewable energy, solar is another uh, growth driver, uh, which is not really consumer demand, but it is uh, demand from the industry which is going to benefit us. And my last question would be, uh, how, have we, how have we managed uh, fluctuations in raw material prices and supply chain challenges? Shall I take this question, man? Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, Ms. Boy. See, uh, if you talk about uh, FI24, the prices uh, of raw materials more or less remain stable and there were no major fluctuations. And the uh, only thing which uh, was a challenge for us is uh, this uh, increase in lead time due to rate fee crisis and there are some disruptions in supply chain. So to mitigate that, uh, we have already uh, increased our inventory because it is back-to-back -back booked against the orders. So otherwise, uh, price fluctuations uh, during the current year, at least we have not faced any challenges. Okay. Th thank you, sir. That would be all from my side. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Naman Parmar from Nivesha Investment Advisory. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I just wanted to know what is your average price realization of the flexible packaging machinery? Hello. Yeah. Average price realization would be around, uh, for the flexible packaging, there are also various segments uh, and the size right. of the technology differs. But you, one can say that it, it ranges from 10 to 15 percent. Okay. And for semi-rigid? Uh, semi-rigid, uh, one can say uh, 15 to 20 percent. You are selling for what? 15 to 20 percent of what? That's the margin I'm talking about. The no, I, I, uh, I no, 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 I am I talking. Uh, price realization. Price realization. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, because of the uh, customization, let us say in flexible packaging, uh, the ticket size yeah. would range from. Uh, uh, even 1 crore and going up to 10 crores. It depends on the output okay. levels and the width. Right. And, uh, and for... Semi-digit packaging, yeah. semi packaging again can go up from 1 crore to, uh, to 6, 7 crores. Okay. And uh, currently you are saying you are going into the solar module part. So how much of revenue you are expecting from the renewable side in let's say from next two years down the line. We are expecting another 20 to 25 CR in the, in the next two years from this segment. Okay. And uh, currently you are telling about the capex of 9 to 10 crore. This is for the only land or it is for the tools also? No, currently it is for the land and building. The tools, uh, as I mentioned in the previous discussion, it will be for this year. So the total capex would be of uh, 15 crore for FY25. Around. Yeah, 10 to 15 crore. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you must press star and 1 to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Nikhil Arora, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Uh, from yeah. Good set of numbers, sir. And 
thank you for the opportunity there is still a lot of questions got answered uh, but uh, as you mentioned that we are targeting the beta margins of 13% right for the next 2 years so that would be like for exclusively for domestic or global or like inclusive both just a small confusion over there no no that's including uh, both the markets domestic and global okay okay and ma'am our uh, total income comprise of roughly i mean uh, somewhere around 4 crores for the financial year so if you can throw some light like what does it comprise of prakash bhai would you take it yeah see the total income is mainly uh, comprising of uh, interest on uh, this deposit of around 2.5 crores and uh, there are some uh, export incentives as well uh, of around 70 lakhs or so okay 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 thank you and one last uh, question uh, hello hello yeah, please yeah uh, uh, so I, uh, i think i missed the number of the current order book value so uh, did you mention the order book It's value around 140 cr yeah. okay okay and what would be tenure for this game uh it varies from 4 months to 9 months okay but whatever the pending orders are there we aim to Uh, you know, 75% of the orders we are targeting to uh, execute in first two quarters. Okay. Thank you so much for the clarity, ma'am, and uh, all the best for future. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no, no further questions, I will now hand the conference over to Ms. Kushbu Chandragan Doshi, Managing Director from Raji Engineers Limited, for closing comments. Thank you. So I would like to thank you all of uh, you taking the time out at uh, attending this call. I'm also thankful to each member of our Raji Engineers family, as well as our clients, creditors, banks, financial institutions, and all our stakeholders. For any further queries or information, please get in touch with our investor relations team, S Factor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Raju Engineers Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and now this connection. Thank you.